Hello world, it's Craig. This video is about a new backplane for the SBC bus system. So like the original backplane, it's got four slots, but it does have a few nice features that the 100 millimeter backplane just does not have. Now, when I started the SBC 85 project, one of the goals was to keep the boards as two layers and uh, whenever possible within the 100 millimeter square footprint. The reason being that with JLC PCB at least, the first 100 millimeter square boards that are on an order are always given a special deal of five boards for you know something like two dollars. So of course shipping will be eight or ten that cost of the boards, but I still find that you know a 40 cent circuit board uh, to be completely unbelievable, especially with you know any number of plated through holes, solders, uh, solder mask, and silk screen on both sides. It's just a great deal. So I wanted to keep within the 100 millimeter square footprints. Now, towards that affordability goal, the bulk of those boards were made to be within that footprint, including the backplane. But with that small backplane, one disadvantage is the inability to mount any card guides to this. And so any card guide system, you know, needed to be more of something where the backplane is kind of just a component that fits into the, the card guide system. So this is a base with some little uh, support here for the card guide. And it's not mounted directly to the back plane. The back plane is actually mounted to the card guide. And this works okay. You know, these guys give pretty good support to this. I have another one that's got one uh, arms on the other side also. And, you know, it just adds a little bit of support so that these don't wobble too much in the card edge connector at the base. But I wanted to be able to mount card guides directly to the back plane. And so, you know, let's look at this, uh, this new board. Now, after using the STD bus backplane that I made, I realized how much I really missed not having the bus signals brought out to test points on this uh, on the little original backplane. So on this one, I brought all the test all the bus signals out to test points, and they're also logically grouped rather than just going from you know one to 120 or however many there are. They're grouped. So here's our addresses down here. Here's A0 through A7 in the ground, A8 through A15 in the ground, A16 in the ground. Here's all of our data uh, bus. This is all our local bus, reserved ones, all our bus signals. So these all come out here and it's really convenient to have these because I have made up some, some nine pin uh, DuPont connectors. So I can just plug it onto this end and then the other end has the two row eight pins that directly plug into my Salier connector. So you know, rather than have to wire these up each time, I have just a connector that I can plug into here and plug into the other end. Much, much faster because you're always testing, you know, data buses or your handshaking signals or something like that. Now, another thing this board has is a power switch. And of course, once we started putting these on and one of the big goals was to have card edge connectors. So we do have uh, mounting holes for card edge connectors that go directly onto this, uh, this back plane. Now, the pitch of these were left the same as they were before because a lot of these cards are fairly thick. You know, some of them we can have a ZIF socket, we can have a ZIF socket on the processor, we can have it on this expansion memory card. The bubble board is really fairly thick. You know, if you look at how uh, the components, particularly, you know, this is a DC DC converter here. So the pitch on these is the same as it was on the original card. So all of the, the cards will fit in terms of the original pitch. Here's the power switch back here. And, uh, you know, the, the problem that comes when you put card guides on is that, you know, if you don't have a card guide, and even on this one where I've only got something supporting on one side, you can walk these, these out by gently rocking them back and forth and lift out the connectors from one side of the socket and then the other socket, the other side, and get the card out, you know, much easier than just trying to pull these straight out. But the problem is that when you have card guides, you can't walk these back and forth. So what I've done is, I when I made these card guides, I put them with ejectors, but the ejector had to be at the bottom. And the reason is that because, you know, back to the same 100 millimeter square format, these are so packed that the components have to come right out to the edge on these cards. And because of that, I don't have room at the top, you know, to mount the normal, put a pin in and put, mount the normal ejectors at the top that then push down on the card guide on the side. So I did have to switch to these uh, bottom ejected and we can see from this little animation here that there's basically a little ejector handle on both sides. They got a pivot. And when you pull the two ejectors down, it pushes up on the bottom of the card 
and you know, pushes against the circuit board, and so it pops the card out. And we can see in real life, if I turn this off, unplug this, you know, it's, pre it's pretty easy to just grab a hold of, oops, to grab a hold of these ejectors and pop the card out. And then the card comes straight out. Now, because the, th the components come out to the edges, we couldn't have, you know, full slots like you would have normally have on a card guide. So I just have little tabs here that grab a hold of uh, the card. And most cards will slide down in past those tabs because, you know, there aren't components that come completely out to the edge. If you do have a card that can't slide in, then you can, you can bow this a little bit and open those fingers up and put the card in, basically face insert it and then snap the fingers over the edge. And worst case, if you had one where one of these little tabs was in the way of a component, you could always just, you know, snip that little guy off. He's not necessarily needed. So these are the little card guides for this, and I've made them in, uh, well, let me back up. All of, all of the cards that I have made for these are either the 100 millimeter wide, so they come in, in essentially 100 millimeter wide, or like this big boy in the back, the, the uh, bus monitor is 125 millimeters wide, so that we could see the LEDs out here on the edge and have the switches and, and be able to get these uh, switches down here without taking the card out. So this one is 125 by 125, but most of the, all the other cards are actually 100 millimeters wide and either 100 millimeters tall or 125 millimeters tall. And I'm sorry, this guy is 150 millimeters tall. So 100, 125, 150, and these are all 100 millimeters wide. So since these are mounted per uh, slot and it's not a full card cage, uh, you know, I can put in whichever size I need for a particular uh, card. So this one, I always run my bus monitor in the back, and I just have, have screwed that one uh, in the back. And, of course, there's only these two 632s in the bottom, so, you know, it's easy to change the, uh, the card guide if I needed to. Okay, and uh, so another thing that this back plane has is this push-button reset. And, you know, it's interesting of the things, the signals that I forgot to put on the backplane when I was designing for the original SPC-85 was I didn't put a push-button reset on the fingers. So a number of people that have been making cards or, or uh, you know, processor cards particularly for themselves that they wanted to run with this little bus system because they wanted to run something like the bubble memory or the expansion card or something like that. We've kind of, they've, they've asked me and we've kind of gotten together and we have started formalizing and and you know maybe making the back plane a little bit more uh, usable for or for uh, various processors so much like the STD bus was intended to be used for you know completely processor agnostic we're kind of turning this back plane into uh, more processor agnostic so there were some signals out here for example that were specific for the 8085. You know, there was a SID and SOD line out here, for example, and so that's been renamed to just a transmit and receive. So, you know, more, more generic names for this. And then some signals have been added. So, for example, if you want to use that reset, you need to you know, put a little patch wire in from, you know, pin 29, finger 29 on this to uh, the reset so that this reset on the back plane, this push-button reset is basically just the same as this push-button reset on the processor card. But if you have the processor card buried, then, you know, you'll want to be able to use this back plane reset. So, you know, people have been making their cards for Z80s, 8080s, PIC processors, and who knows what else. And, you know, it's grown way beyond the 8085 original application. So when we started renaming some of these signals, we said, well, we not only have to rename some of these signals, we need to change the logic state of some of these signals. So if we had a, an interrupt, for example, before I may have had that asserted high, uh, and we need to change that to be asserted low so that you could you know, maybe have more cards that could, you know, they could be open collected then and you could have other cards that could pull it, pull it low. So there are some signals that changed logic state. Now to be clear, all of the signals on this backplane, except for the reset that we talked about, they just go through all the the, uh, the edge connectors in parallel. So any card that worked with the original system will still work in this backplane as long as they're all compatible with that. But now, you know, going forward, new cards that come out, you know, we'll need to explicitly say, okay, this is the new version for 
the the standardized bus signals and so these signals have changed a little bit or they may have moved or at the very minimum they're going to be renamed so there's a little bit of a transition effort going on here in order to get this uh, uh, standardized and you know up to this point it's been you know like the federal land grants of the 1860s where you know if you could claim it you could have it and so there were a lot of reserved lines on this back plane that we're now assigning to you know if somebody's making a z80 board or a, a pick processor card or something like that you know we're kind of more formally assigning signals that are compatible with that and as i said these are really based on the std bus so if you're looking at these signals and they don't make sense if you go over and you look at the std bus you can probably see where it came from now that specification document is very much a work in progress it's on the project website and i'll put a link to it in the description and we would welcome any thoughts on you know what we're not seeing what we've gotten wrong and just what's completely missing so i got on that little tangent about the back plane because we were talking about this push button reset and you know it still just surprises me that i didn't in the original back plane have a push button reset but you know this wasn't intended to really kind of take off this was just a little project that i was doing uh, for my own so that is the new spc back plane kind of in a nutshell and I have been considering making an eight slot version of this. I don't know if I will include the test points in that. That would make this you know, get pretty long. Uh, let me know your thoughts on that. Usually by the time I'm using an eight slot backplane, I'm not doing development or diagnostic or debugging. I'm just running a system. And so I don't know that these are necessarily needed, but you know, let me know your thoughts on that. And somebody was working on a eight slot version uh, and they were going to put, they weren't going to have these test points on it, but they were going to put a USB to serial uh, chip directly on the backplane. So you wouldn't have to use a, a, a separate adapter or a separate serial port. So hopefully maybe I can get away or not even have to make the 8-plane backplane at all. Maybe somebody else will do that. Now I'm still getting more experience on this board and I'm going to wait a bit to see if there's any mistakes before I put the build files up on the project site. It's summertime, I've been busy with other projects and I haven't come back to really testing this, but you know, to know all the labels are correct and so forth. But I know, you know the basic functionality is there. I've been running it with these four cards and uh, it's you know, the basic functionality of the backplane seems to be there. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. As always, this channel is entirely fueled by likes and subscribers and interesting comments and suggestions. I will talk with you later. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.